am New York, young man. I got the meanest streets, the hardest concrete. Right here, in my heart, you and destiny are gonna meet. How can you rise up where others have fallen? What a spectacular move! When they say I never sleep, this is what they're talking about. Lighting it up when the pressure's on. Kobe, Kobe, does it again. Starting fast, finishing strong. But my map is a maze of side streets and shadows. Oh, I can't get over this. That make you lose your way. It is his show at the moment. So keep moving straight ahead in the Big East Championship. This week in New York City, nobody has exhibited that will to prevail more than Bronx native Kemba Walker, who's led the Huskies of Connecticut back to where they haven't been in six years, a Big East semifinal. Tonight, they meet a familiar foe, Jim Beheim and the Syracuse Orange, who are looking for their conference record 15th title game appearance. It's another classic matchup at the Garden between UConn and Syracuse. Welcome everybody to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods and ESPN's coverage of the 2011 Big East Championship presented by American Eagle Outfitters. Tonight, Connecticut, the number 19 team in the country, the number nine seed in the Big East Championship takes on Syracuse, number 11 in the nation and the four seed here at the Big East Championship. In fact, three of the top four seeds have moved on to the semifinals. Only Pittsburgh did not knocked out by Connecticut yesterday. So Syracuse, Notre Dame and Louisville tonight playing for just the second day in a row, while Connecticut will be playing for the fourth time in as many days. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us on the two-year anniversary, more or less, of that epic game in 2009. Six overtimes between Syracuse and Connecticut. Let's hope for similar excitement, <laughs> perhaps not that long a game tonight. And in the case of Connecticut, the nine seed, Kemba Walker really has willed them to this point in the tournament. He certainly has. You know, he's averaged 23, 24 points a game, but it's important that he gets out in transition for Connecticut because that's where he can be devastating. And for Syracuse, they have to keep him out of full court situations. That means they're off Offense has to help their defense. They can't turn the ball over. They can't take bad shots that lead to runouts because 40% of Kemba Walker's offense comes from transition or comes from isolation along with ball screens. And believe me, you can ball screen a zone. There are times when that zone will be screened and they have got to keep him out of open court situations where he can really hurt, make him play five on five against that Syracuse zone. He scored 78 points in the first three games, only six shy of the Big East Championship record held by Eric Devendorf of Syracuse and of course the memorable two points to eliminate Pittsburgh yesterday. Billy had his worst game of the season against Syracuse. Syracuse beat Connecticut in February in Hartford. Kemba had a season low eight points. Uh, Jimmy Beheim said our zone isn't that good. We don't rebound. Fab Mello, how did he play? Hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when is this guy happy? The zone is so tough. I think we'd all agree their ability to face out and get run outs is important. I think it's going to be tough for Kemba to turn the corner, even with ball screens, simply because you're playing three and four guys once you get in the middle of the lane. Maybe give them some threes, but challenge those threes. We are delighted to be joined tonight by Doris Burke. Doris? Sean, you mentioned the four games and four days for the University of Connecticut. If you look at the minutes distribution on their roster, it will be a test for these young legs. Significant play for a multitude of guys, including 112 of a possible 120 minutes played by Kemba Walker. UConn decided to forego their normal hour-long shoot-around, went through a glorified 20-minute walkthrough at the gym next to their hotel. They did not even bother to change into practice here and just a note guys Roscoe Smith has been cleared to play those eight stitches over his eye an inch long gash the only concern clearly would be whether or not it reopens Sean all right Doris thank you Connecticut winners are three straight here for losing their last two regular season games they're 24 and 9 overall Walker with the talented freshman Jeremy Lamb as Doris said Smith will start they want to play a big lineup to get in the middle of that Syracuse zone early Oriaki and Aquandu 
two big fellas in the front line for Jim Calhoun. Scoop Jardine, the Syracuse point guard with Brandon Trish, who had 22 yesterday in the win over St. John's. Chris Joseph, their leading scorer. Rick Jackson, the defensive player of the year in the Big East, and by Musakata, a role player for Jim Beheim in his 35th season as head coach at his alma mater. 36 and 31 all time against the Connecticut Huskies. This is his 33rd season with 20 wins or more. Locking horns again with his longtime friend, fellow Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer Jim Calhoun. A win tonight would be his 600th in 25 years at Connecticut and his 848th overall. Mike Stevens, Jeff Clark, James Breeding, the officials, and Yukon's Oquando in blue controlled the tip. Nice shot McGlynn to Jay Billis. Serious goes. Minimum. Well, zone with some minimum principles. Got to watch behind this zone as well. They're going to try to keep a man behind it to flatten it out. Jeremy Lamb missed the game's first shot. Joseph guarded by Roscoe Smith. Trisha now Jardine. Using a screen from Keita. Double screen on the other side gets Trisha good luck if he wanted it. Rick Jackson, second team all Big East to the chagrin of Coach Beheim. We thought he should have been first team all conference. Seven to shoot. Trish had it blocked by Lamb. Gathered by Keita. Shot clock running out and air ball. Well, Sean and Jay, I think the biggest concern for UConn with this lineup is the running of Syracuse. They're going to have to make sure they get back. Nice look. The lob Walker to Alex Oriaki. Now a three out of the corner. Wouldn't go for Jardine, but an offensive rebound and score by Chris Joseph, who leads the Orange at 14.2 points per game. Well, maybe that'll get Chris Joseph going. He's got to find a way to get some easy baskets. Opponents are playing him for the drive. He's got to find a way to score. They're getting it along the baseline. That's going to flatten that zone out and then kick it back out and then attack. Roscoe Smith shot blocked on the perimeter by Rick Jackson. Second in the Big East and block shots this year. Joseph for three. And that's that early offense. The bigs have to get back and identify for UConn. It's amazing how when you take a bad shot, how it puts your defense in such a bad spot, you usually give up a wide open look on the other end. Joseph had made only one of his previous nine from three-point range. Careful with that trap in that short corner. But Good they, decision. But they want to get it down. There. I know, but you got to make a quick decision. Walker splits the defense and fouled after the fake in the middle of the lane. Chris Joseph is really good at running the floor and getting an early basket, something easy off that offensive rebound. It just gets you in a good rhythm, and he catches that in rhythm after the bad shot by Roscoe Smith that got blocked. Anytime you get a jump shot blocked, you know you took a bad shot. Exactly. Kemba Walker at the free throw line. He's 80%. Gets to the line a lot with his great ability to penetrate. Averages seven and a half free throw attempts per game. Went to the line 243 times prior to tonight. Averaging 26 per game. And when he gets into the lane, Sean, You've got to stay on the floor and make him shoot over. If he gives you a little shot fake, wait until he leaves the floor before you leave the floor as a shot blocker. He shouldn't have been at the free throw line. That was a defensive error. He had a dreadful night shooting the ball in that regular season game against Syracuse in Hartford. Went three for 14 from the floor, did Walker, including one out of eight from three point range. Trish, pretty nice look. dump down. And the bucket by by Musakita. And nice play, too, by Joseph as well. Very unselfish. Coombs McDaniel on the floor now. Better matchup for UConn. And Coombs McDaniel with the ball now. Fed Oriaki. He's had some good games as Jamal against Syracuse. Walker for three. Tip wouldn't go for Oriaki. That'll be Syracuse ball. A really good movement by Syracuse using a ball screen on one side and then Trish catches it helping uphill it drew Oriaki to him and that opened it up for Kata who's playing with that injured hand it's tough for him to catch he's in a lot of pain. Fab Mello has come in the big freshman 
And a foul on the drive as Joseph tried to move to the bucket and was impeded. Bello got a huge hand as he entered and was introduced. A lot of Syracuse fans, a lot of UConn fans here too. They always are well represented. Both fan bases at the Garden. Fab Mello was in the witness protection program for Syracuse at the end of the year, sat out two games, played sparingly in several others. But he has come on in their regular season finale, and particularly yesterday, with some big plays late in their wins against St. John's. He had 12 points a career high. Nice hands. You were in the witness protection program in your undergraduate days, I think? Only in class. <laughs> yeah. But when it came to class, wasn't spotted all that often. The Lama guy who's really stepped it up. I think this has made UConn much better at the end of the year. He's going to be a special player, isn't he? Oh, no, absolutely. Smooth, long arms. Trish, confident looking stroke, a little short with a deep two. Walker looks to push. They had the Lamb, who was on the Big East all rookie team, and deservedly so. He might have been the best rookie in the conference this year. Went to Cleveland, Melvin, and DePaul. Deep, deep shot. shot. That? Yeah, that was <laughs> terrible. He's better at driving, and if that arrives late, that's fine. And Jim Calhoun wasn't a real happy Hall of Famer on that one. Well, he'll be, he'll be able to sit next to Coombs McDaniel in a couple of seconds. Sparky Anderson with the hook. <laughs> nice double. Good catch by Joseph. Ten to shoot. Good hands on defense by Coombs McDaniel. Now Jardine for three. Nice presence. Joseph's done a nice job. He had two handoffs to Trish earlier. That time survived that little battle. A nice kick. And that offensive rebound really got Joseph going. That, that was a big play in this game for him. Oquandu. Off for Lamb. The big fella Rick Jackson steps out on him. See so yeah, how they really hedge out on Walker. They're going to make him penetrate and then pinch or take a deep one. Oriaki missed from the free throw line. Jim Calhoun, that's where the ball wants to go. He told us in the middle of that zone. Out of bounds, last touch by Rick Jackson. It'll be Connecticut ball down six when we come back. And when we do, we'll revisit that epic six overtime game between these two teams at the Garden two years ago. Between these two in a Big East quarterfinal two years ago, the second longest game in college basketball history. Johnny Flynn a double double. AJ Price for Connecticut as well. Matter of fact, there were eight players in the game that had double doubles. They combined for 102 points after regulation. There are also four players on each team who fouled out. Uh, so many vivid memories for us. Three hours and 46 minutes that ended at 1:22 in the morning. What jumps out for you? You know, I said it on Sports I'll say it again. My memories of that game are framed by your amazing call of that. Uh, usually, your voice ringing in my ears is a bad thing, but <laughs> in, in this case, it was a really good thing. Thank you. Uh, it was an extraordinary happening. We were privileged to be here. Uh, 209 shots in that game. Uh, Paul Harris and Johnny Flynn were 29 of 30 combined from the free throw line. Big plays when they were the most tired. Showed a lot of courage. You know, that late at night, the last thing I heard was last call. I was very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but how about Johnny Flynn, 67 minutes. Uh, Jay, you, you, you're, oh. This kid making a, every free throw, 16 for 16. Just utterly amazing. Officiating was beautiful that night. Really was an epic. Anybody who watched it. We'll remember for a very long time. Ooh, not a good turnover. After that compliment to Sean, uh, what do you get, carry his bags later today? I've been doing it all this time. Why stop? Well deserved, though. He was phenomenal. 
You know, I don't think Jim Beheim minds the ball getting into the middle of that zone if it's going to Oriaki or Kwandu. Yeah, they can't make the decision or the shot. They're, they're allowing it in there. What, what they don't want is that ball to get on the baseline. Do you recall the last game we did with Sergeus? We were saying, how about a guard sliding into that center spot? They may have to do that with Coombs yeah. McDaniel. Make a decision. Joseph went by. Roscoe Smith got called for charge. First foul on Chris Joseph. Short little pull up. I mean, it was a good move getting right by Roscoe Smith. Pull up right at the uh, dotted line. Short little jumper. You've got rebounding there. It's a little too far. You know what else jumps out at me about that six overtime game? Jim Beheim saying, I've never been prouder of any team I've coached. You think of all the successful teams that he's had, including the national championship team in 2003. Uh, and you can understand why he would feel that way because both teams gave it everything they have. Hashim Fabi diving on the court at well over seven feet tall, deep into the overtimes. Oriaki fouled. Again, they got it deep into that Syracuse zone, and Alex will go to the free throw line. A nice look by Beverly, huh? They're keeping a man sometimes too behind the zone. They want to flatten it out. And Aquandu goes into the middle, and then Oriaki just sneaks behind the zone and stays along the baseline. That's where UConn wants to attack. Now, I don't think that Beheim minds it going into the middle. There aren't enough playmakers. If Jeremy Lamb gets it in there, Coombs McDaniel, then there's a problem. But if Oriaki or Aquandu get it in there, they're fine with that. We got a very good free throw shooting team, 75%. Oriaki, though, not particularly good at 62. He made one out of two, and it's a five point game. Six minutes in, first semifinal of the night. Notre Dame and Louisville in the on deck circle. A couple of subs in for Syracuse. Here's Dion Waiters. CJ Fair is also in, number five. Nice kickback. Fab Mello finally missed. He had made 10 straight shots, went five for five against DePaul, five for five yesterday against St. John's. Turned over to Waiters, the freshman. Uh, Jim Calhoun wants some easy baskets. Uh, good transition D by Syracuse. C.J. Fair has a clever game inside. The lefty freshman out of Baltimore makes it 12 to 5 for the Cuse. Well, he really does have a nice mid-range game. Good pass ahead. Mello. And a good block. Oquandu met at the rim by Fab Mello. Nice Waiters slip. underneath to Jackson. He missed the dunk. Mm. Well, then they get down the floor. They can smell a fast break opportunity. Well, Beverly in the game. He and Walker are the only two UConn players left who played in that six overtime game. Beverly played only four minutes. Oriaki fouled in the traffic again. Called Jim Beheim does not like. It's on Mello, his second very quickly. Uh, Jay, uh, getting back and in position, I mean, this is going to be tough for Kemba. He's going to have to pull it up, fan dribble. They got to get some bumps. You had mentioned on the open, some ball screens maybe to get him in there. That's like passing it to him on the foul line. Well, Fab Mello did a terrific job of getting over there to cut off that baseline in transition just was over there and big and if you make Walker take a shot over the top of you make him take a tough two. Mm -hmm. Kwandu goes out. Oriaki. Makes two this time. Oriaki. Got off to a great start in this Big East Championship Tuesday. He had the double double 13 and 19 rebounds. And they went over to Paul. Strong drive, but then the shot was too strong by Chris Joseph. And the rebound for Tyler Olander, who's in along with Shabazz Napier in possession of the ball now. And this is uh, similar to Hansborough with Atkins in the game. Play off the ball now for and gives him an open, a good catch. He had a shot that time, Kemba. They're doing a good job of shading over to him. You really can't leave him at all. Olander, nicely done from the elbow. The freshman out of Mansfield, Connecticut, right up the street from the University of Connecticut. The average is only 1.3 points per game. Tough shot, and it's long by Waiters, the long rebound to C.J. Fair. Fair's got that little hesitation in the lane, likes those runners, the hooks. Waiters, freshman from Philadelphia. 
Well, Wade is going to be pretty good down the road, don't you think? Oh. He plays with a lot of confidence. Nice post pass to the rock, according to Jim Calhoun. Yeah, that was a great compliment. Yeah. Calhoun paid Rick Jackson before the game. He said he really is the rock of the league. Really the most dominant big man in the league in terms of his ability at both ends of the floor. Olander missed a shorty, but Donnell Beverly came out of it with the ball. Now Napier a floater and a tap wow. by Olander. What work he's doing off the Connecticut bench. Incredible reaction. How about somebody giving you a spark? Started some games, tough kid. Probably much more relaxed coming off the bench. Well, anytime you go for a shot block, that opens up the offensive glass. Olander took advantage of it. Six straight points for Connecticut to get back within one. Joseph for three. And it's Olander and Fair and a held ball. And the ball goes back to Syracuse with a full shot clock. Well, we previewed Kemba Walker. Perhaps we should have focused the open of the telecast on Tyler Olander. <laughs> that was my pick. How about you, Jay? He's done a great job. The left-hander with the left-handed tip. Both games are subject to blackouts in ACC markets. North Carolina just did squeak by Miami today on a buzzer beater by Tyler Zeller. They were way down. On the inbounding play, Joseph shot blocked, and Syracuse will play it in. It's amazing. Well executed play, but the reaction was superb, wasn't it? You know, if you hesitate a little bit, they're going to get there to block it. This kid takes offense. The on waiters found on a little brush. And if they call that all night long, we will be here till 122 in the morning. <laughs> Boy, now you sound like the old coach there. <laughs> a little moaning going on early. First foul on Okwandu. Same play. Don't you like it when coaches go back to the same thing that was effective because they're all multiple options. If they take away one thing, you've got the next. Well, they ride it, don't they? Trish, line drive shot. Brandon Trish, an emerging star in the Big East, 22 points. In their win yesterday against St. John's, that was his season high. I think he's Syracuse's best player. Yeah, he, he's a stud, no question about it. Tough kid. I love the way he squares up when he goes at the rim, too, and a confident shooter. I just want to see him take over to show that ego of the best player. Oquando, perhaps you could give him a couple of lessons on that subject. <laughs> a little jump hook inside for Charles Oquando, his first bucket. He averages three points a game. Syracuse playing a long time here in the middle of the half without Scoop Jardine. Olander tipped it into the backcourt. Good denial here. Boy, Kemba looks fresh early, doesn't he? And we asked Jim Kelly before the game, do you have to worry about managing the minutes Pretty. tonight? Beautiful pass by Mello off to Rick Jackson. That's a combination that clicked in crunch time at the end of the game yesterday. Jim Kelly said, I'm really not worried about Kemba Walker. He can go and go and go. Might have to worry about managing the minutes for a few others, but in a situation like tonight, you have to throw your best players out there and not be quite as concerned about fatigue. There is no tomorrow. Well, they've got to find him some shots. I mean, he's played 11 minutes. That's so one shot attempt. That's what this zone is all about. And Jim Behan follows Mello's a good passer. He sure is, isn't he? Olander blocked by Jackson and Waiters denied Olander from behind. Bill, you were complimenting Fab Mello on the pass he had last night to Jim Beheim, and he said, hey, he can pass. How about that look, huh? And didn't walk either. Nice little drive. Drew some people. That's a point guard's play by the big fella. He is the Big East preseason rookie of the year, selected by the coaches. And a lot of people before he ran the circus were talking about him as a one-and-done player. That's a shot clock violation. Fab says he knew he wasn't going to be a one and done player that he had a lot of work to get done in college to develop his skills. But it was a disappointing season for most of it for Mello. But here he is emerging late in the year right on cue. He throws up an <laughs> awful looking look. Uh, I think Jimmy just forgot his name to be a nice cut and up and up look. <laughs> I love the way he's playing. I know you mentioned he doesn't get any shots. If he can keep distributing like this, he will be a major factor, Kemba Walker. Good field, draw a couple. 
Whoa. Wow. Leaving a guy behind the zone, cutting in from the corner. And Walker, for all those shots and scoring, is a good assist man, too. He averages over four assists per game, 4.3. C.J. Fair back in. Joseph has two fouls, but he's going to stay in for the moment. Scoop Jardine has now returned. Jeremy Lamb, 77% from the free throw line for the freshman from Norcross, Georgia. And yeah, the only knock on him early, the coach, is he just needs a little more strength. He understands how to play Lamb. George Blaney was talking about his demeanor, saying it looks like he's going to fall asleep out there, but the kid is engaged, and well, he's really going to be something. George Blaney, one of the UConn assistants, very successful head coach at Holy Cross and elsewhere. Walker trying to give them the lead now. It is blocked by C.J. Fair. Okwandu missed the jump hook. Out of bounds, last touch by Oriaki. So some good chances around the basket, but the Huskies could not convert. Now that's an example of what the zone's all about. You don't, you get the ball in the low, you still got to make the shot because you've got big arms, good elevation, some body strength as well. Nothing comes easy against the Cuse. Huskies have missed their last five shots, shooting 23 and a half percent for the first half, but still within one, Syracuse shooting 35 percent. Jardine too strong. Jackson a tip. Okwandu the rebound. Senior from Lagos, Nigeria. Something in the early is what they're looking for. Haven't been able to. Cuse getting back. Kemba Walker saw a gap and he got bumped by Brandon Trish. First foul on Trish. Uh, Jay, you mentioned the inability to get some open looks. He's putting it on the deck a little. Some opposition at the rim by the Bigs from the Cuse. Coverage of the Big East Championship is also available on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. With our good buddies Mark Jones and Bob Valvano have their 3D glasses on upstairs in the North Press Box. First year for 3D at the Big East Championship, so they have to earn their way toward better seats. Perhaps mm -hmm. next year they won't be in the Bob Euchre seats. I thought they were the Blues Brothers, to be honest with you, with the glasses. I'm it's surprised you know who the Blues Brothers are. That's a relatively contemporary <laughs> reference. Well, Kimba will have the Blues if he doesn't get some looks. As long as they win, doesn't bother this guy. There's the screen you were talking about. First and clean one. There's a shot and the first field goal for Kemba Walker. And Yukon's battled from seven down to take the lead. 17-16, but 7-20 to go in the first half. That's one of the most effective ways to attack his own is to screen it. it, it know, if that's the only way they can do it, they got to get him the ball. He has got to take more shots. Rick There's Jackson some. kicked it out of bounds. Tried to drive down the side of the lane and turned it over. Inbounding the ball here, and as soon as Kemba Walker gets it, Charles Aquandu steps up to set a screen. C.J. Fair has got to be up there, and he didn't get up there in time. Yeah, I was just thinking, what a call from the bench is when I when I was interrupted. You know, Calhoun said, "How am I going to get my guy on track?" He sure did. Ooh. Napier's pass off the hands of Oriaki and out of bounds. Four turnovers committed by Calhoun's Husky. Napier guarding Jardine, Jim Calhoun, or Jim Beheim rather, electing to leave Chris Joseph on the floor with two fouls. Nice cross. He drives toward the bucket, blocked by Okwandu. I thought Joseph was losing his legs anyway. I don't think that one was going in, uh, but just a gorgeous use of the bounce, getting himself close. The bigs dominating. Joseph open for three and rattled it home. Hey, the out of bounds plays are fluid, aren't they? Walker from NBA, three point range, and Jackson over the crowd to rip it down. Jardine one and one on Walker. Lamb hustled back to help. Trisha tip. Lamb has it. Huskies look to run. Walker ahead of the field. How about speed? We talked about Ziva last night. Putting those puppies down at a great look. Syracuse concentrating the offensive end. Nobody covered. With a terrific outlet by Jackson. They miss a, a layup, but all of a sudden it's a layup on the other end. And here they come looking to run again. Fresh legs, fourth game in four days. Walker short with the fadeaway. And Jackson again. 
Well, he taller than the rest. He doesn't give it up once he gets it. <laughs> and he gets his mitts on it. That is Rick Jackson's ball. No debate. Uh, Jim Calhoun said we got to have this. That step out, you got to get back. But Jim Calhoun said we need some easy baskets in the open floor. And just to soften up. Can't play against that zone all night. You mentioned the kick out, Jay. Great look by Lamb and Gamba. Getting in the flow a little bit here, a little body check by a strong 200 pound plus Trish. Good, clean, tough play. Kwandu second foul, he's out of the game for the moment. Rick Jackson, no. CJ Fair called for an over the back foul. That puts Syracuse over the limit. Connecticut's called for just three fouls to this point. Syracuse fouls on CJ Fair, his first. Syracuse has 17 fouls, seven. No, Jardine back out, and Dion Waiters is in. That's a sign there, Jay, huh? I mean, he's going to have to take a lot of timeouts while the game's going on. He's going to get a blow now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, nothing will bother that kid. He's going he's gonna, to keep like a Timex watch. He's going to keep ticking. Well, he's, he's cheating at the right time, though. One and one for Olander, who's attempted ten free throws all year and made seven. He didn't think it was good. He started <laughs> toward give the me, bucket. <laughs> give me that one back. So Kemba Walker with six points tonight has now tied the Big East championship record for most points in a Big East tournament. Whereas Eric Devendorf had the benefit of the six overtime game to rack up his 84 points in 2009. Then you'll recall had an overtime game the next night when Syracuse beat West Virginia in overtime to make it to the 09 final which they lost to Louisville. Tough shot for Joseph. It's the Huskies quicker up and down the floor to this point. Beverly chased by Waiters. Give the screen. Olander listens to Coach Raftery. Beverly, a three that popped out. And a good rebound in traffic by Joseph. Trish the pull up. Short with a three. Oriaki the rebound. What is he a great balance, doesn't he? Walker. Syracuse did a nice job though stopping the ball. Trish and Waiters together kept him from getting into the lane. They're a terrific pinch team, Jay. Lamb, woo. Very long with a three. Nobody there. UConn hasn't made a three. That could be a sign of fatigue in the legs. They're 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. Jeez, a lot of individual play. The Syracuse not really running their stuff. Trish, another quick jack. Long rebound down to Walker. Some of the bad shots have led to runouts. And a deep two by Kemba. Three-point lead for Connecticut and a timeout called by Jim Beheim. One of the interesting aspects of this record setting tournament now that Walker has had is that he still has not made a three point field goal in four games this week at the Garden. Connecticut by three. They're shooting 27 percent. Syracuse 26. A lot of it is because of bad shot selection on both sides. Both teams want to run tonight if they can. Well, and you talk about it's not the defense of Syracuse that is letting them down here and Kemba Walker getting open. It's their offense. You mentioned it, Sean. They've taken some bad shots. Those bad shots are the first pass in the fast break of UConn. And they have really, as you said, Bill, gotten Kemba Walker into this game by making some offensive mistakes. Syracuse's offense has to help their defense. And you just opened it up for him. He's got confidence now. Tough shot. Jardine just put back in. He's had a couple of extended stints on the bench. Well, Jim Calhoun said one of the keys tonight for the Huskies, they have to get fast break points. They couldn't get out and run in the regular season game in Hartford, and they lost and scored only 58 points. They need some easy baskets before that Syracuse Pretty. zone gets set. Olander powers it in. Pretty play. If you cut at the proper time, good initiation by popping and flashing something. Jim Calhoun said they were going to do with the bigs. I still would like a wing or a guard to get into the middle of that lane. I think they could really decimate the interior day. Seven points off the bench for Tyler Olander. Nobody back. 
Raiders very tough shot again. Nine straight misses largely because they're taking terrible shots. Walker trying to extend the Connecticut run comes McDaniel unlucky as it rattled out last touch by Olander active on the glass again. Oftentimes it's not the stars that can make the difference in a winning effort. It's the role players and Tyler Olander has played a big role in this one. Joe Lenardi has Alabama among his last four teams in the NCAA tournament in Georgia among the first four out. What a tough loss they had. Made one timeout call, had a regroup, lost in overtime. If you want evidence that Syracuse has taken some bad shots, they haven't had a single free throw attempt in this first half. That's the penetration you need. There you yep. go. Scoop Jardine can give it to them, the junior from Philadelphia. Honorable mention all Big East this season. He has five. Syracuse led by seven early. And the five point lead a moment ago was the largest tonight for UConn. I wonder if he can do some damage in there if he can get it. Take away by Waiters. Very fast to the bucket. And Walker faster the other way. Has help with him. Oh, got Mello in the air, and that's three fouls on Fab Mello. But he just knows when he's got a favorable matchup. You know, gives that little shot fake, gets a big guy in the air. That's the second time he's done that in this game and picked up two fouls that he shouldn't have gotten. And Jay, watch him get this ball though. That's up for grabs. Scintillating maneuver, and he's got him on a string. Fab. Oh, what a great player oh. Kemba Walker is. Oh, See, fun to watch. He's just got an amazing heart. Mm -hmm. First team all Big East, and certainly a very serious candidate to be the player of the year in the conference. It went to Ben Hansbrook, Notre Dame. His mom, Andrea, here tonight. Very proud of her son. Jim Calhoun says that Kemba Walker is the most important player to his team in America. Wow, that's high praise. Another quick one, even if it goes. Leon Waiters, the three out of the corner. His first points of the night. It's a two point game as we took down to a minute and a half left in the first half of this Big East Championship semifinal. And Sean, what, what I love most about Kemba is he smiles all the time. Something that <clears throat> some of us could learn from. <laughs> Walker. Again, Olander at the rim. Olander is seven points and a half. That's a career high for a game. He had seven earlier in the year against Harvard. Great Walker. hustle back by Walker. And Jardine loafing back on defense after he got stripped. It's already been lectured a couple of times by Jim Beheim tonight, and that might get him on the bench again. You're going to lose the ball. Yep, there he goes. He was stripped of the ball and then trotted back on defense, and Beheim puts Trish back in. How about the energy level of Kemba? Not giving up on anything whatsoever. Talk about leadership qualities, nonverbal. Follow me, guys. Watch Oriaki behind his own. They've been patient when they've had to. Here's the pop turn and look. Oh, goodness, got to be tougher with it. Wow, Jackson, the defensive player of the year in the Big East, has ripped it away from Olander. C.J. Fair. What's that little lane move? Boy, is he tough in there, Olander. Little late on the coverage. First foul on Tyler. His brother Ryan plays at Fairfield University. They were the Metro Atlantic regular season champs under Ed Cooley, a rising star in the college coaching profession. They won the outright this year, didn't they, in the MAC the regular yeah, season? Yeah, got the got no, pretty good in the conference tournament. Well, at least they'll be in the NIT. C.J. Fair has it pop out. The first free throw of the night for Syracuse. One of the keys to that six overtime win over UConn was they shot the free throws better. Syracuse notorious for not being a good free throw shooting team but Syracuse made 40 out of 51 that night. Well UConn went 24 out of 42. Jim Calhoun said we lost because we missed way too many free throws and turned it over 27 times. You know I'm just thinking Sean you'd be a great coach. You don't sugarcoat anything. I saw both of them talk to their subs. Lay it right out there. Don't hesitate. Lamb had a little trouble on the catch. Jim Calhoun doesn't like the call. 
Got to be careful out of the coaching box there. Now he's on the floor. I thought Louis kind of second was the greatest on being inbounds. Jimmy's getting there. Yeah, Louis used to be uh, out by the Big East logo sometimes. <laughs> the players have to dribble around him <laughs> to get to the corner. Well, they certainly can go over him. Who will have the lead at the half? Waiters throws it out to Trish at the buzzer. UConn by one at the break. Great execution, though. Ten points at the half for Walker, who set the Big East tournament record with most points in one Big East championship. At the half, Connecticut 26, Syracuse 25. Let's send it back to Reese Davis, Hubert Davis, Hubert Davis, Digger Phelps of the Cisco Halftime Report. I am New York, young man. When they say I never sleep, this is what they're talking about. Lighting it up when the pressure's on. Starting fast. Finishing strong. In the Big East Championship. And welcome back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods and ESPN's coverage of the 2011 Big East Championship brought to you by American Eagle Outfitters. Semifinal number one, Notre Dame and Louisville later on. This is Connecticut and Syracuse two years after their six overtime classic in this tournament. And it's Connecticut by one at the break, 26-25. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, Jim Calhoun talked about the importance of getting fast break points. The Huskies have to be tired four games in as many days, but they're trying to run led by Kemba Walker. Well, anytime you can get out in transition, it'll energize you a little bit. And if you want to play ahead of the defense, you have got to outlet it and pass ahead. And I thought that at certain times, this Connecticut team did a very good job of that. The other times they did a good job, they took advantage of bad shots by Syracuse, and that led to their fast breaks, Bill. Yeah, unbelievable opportunities and the nonstop hustle. This guy could play a six overtime game and announce a seven overtime game. He's got great stamina, great Here's numbers. The Subway fresh take, and Kemp is still fresh. Ten more points tonight. He played the entire 20 minutes of the first half after he played the full 40 yesterday against Pittsburgh. He is set with his 10 points in the first half. The Big East championship record for most points in one Big East tournament. And he's still going. He has the ball to begin the second half with Jeremy Lamb. Now Jamal Coombs McDaniel, Charles Aquandu, and Alex Oriaki open the second half for the Huskies as well. Aquandu a miss. A rebound by Bai Musicata to Scoop Jardine with Chris Joseph, Rick Jackson, and Brandon Trish. And they will give them that all night long. They want it in there. Mm -hmm. Rick Jackson scores with the left hand. He is a lefty. He has four points. Senior from Philadelphia. But Jim Beheim does not care if Oriaki and Aquandu catch it in the middle. They want it to go in there. Jeremy Lamb. A great challenge on the shot. Oriaki missed the short one. Great job to get the offensive rebound. Now a held ball. And it'll go over to Syracuse, and we go over to Doris Burke. Sean had a chance to speak with Mike Hopkins, Syracuse assistant. The greatest source of displeasure in that locker room was shot selection. You guys talked about it. They talked about getting more movement, helping each other to get shots. They simply said, guys, we can't stand around while one guy is trying to make plays. Let's work together. Guys? Yeah, Syracuse shot 27% in the first half. Connecticut 27% as well. Connecticut outscored Syracuse 10 to 1 at the free throw line, but Syracuse made four threes in the first half, and UConn went 0 for 8 from beyond the arc. Jardine, who had an indifferent first half, now has seven. Nice play by Jackson. Very unselfish. Little kick out. Ah, oh, small change. Scoop. First foul on Jardine. Get it in and move. Space out a little bit. And a quick release over that right hand Walker. There's the flash. That's the job. Now I love the wingman or the guard. He said that earlier in the game. It's still very difficult to get a shot up over those Syracuse interior guys. And the Walker, the bucket, he has 12. He's 16 more to reach 800 points for the season. He'd be the only the third UConn player ever to have 800 
in a season. It was last touched by Connecticut, deflected out of bounds. Danielle Marshall and Ray Allen, the only two players who have ever had 800 points in a year at UConn. Yeah, it's interesting. Syracuse's first shot defense has been excellent. It's the problems when they've taken some bad shots in transition, and also when they've given up offensive rebounds. That Kemba Walker has gotten his best looks. So he couldn't beat that look for fair either. UConn plus six rebounding. Jim Calhoun said that it was another key. They did not rebound the ball well in the regular season loss. Against Syracuse, line drive shot good by Alex Oriaki, the sophomore from Lowell, Massachusetts. And that's something that Jim Beheim's going to live with. He just nodded his head over there. That was okay defensively. That didn't bother him. That's a shot that he's going to force Oriaki to make. Joseph Strip battled for it with Coombs McDaniel. Coombs McDaniel was out of bounds. Now you're saying that like you could relate to that. Did they leave you alone? alone for this, for this <laughs> I was the guy that was always open, and there was a reason why I was always open. But they're not going to give him a wide open shot. They'll put late pressure on it, but not ready on the inbounds. Either team, right? Really good execution by Syracuse. There's another bucket for Rick Jackson, starting his 95th consecutive game for Syracuse. He's had a terrific career, particularly his senior season. Walker for his first three of the Big East Championship. A great use of the floor, that diagonal. Just organize the puppies. Well, they got it on the baseline. That's an area where UConn clearly has decided to attack. Getting it along the baseline, flattening out the defense, and then picking it out. Even though they're not going to get a shot from Oriaki on the baseline, they get it to him. He draws two defenders and then looks opposite, and that gives Kemba Walker just enough time to squeeze off a three. That's really good offense against the zone by Connecticut. I wonder if you make that shot now. They're flashing him a little bit. Walker been 0 for 10 in the tournament from three point range before the three. Coombs McDaniel in the middle of the zone. Timeout, Jim Beheim. Busy night outside Madison Square Garden where Connecticut leads Syracuse 35 to 31. Lots of celebrities in the house tonight, including the great Dwayne Pearl Washington, who started Syracuse in the mid 80s. A little bit later, Derek Coleman played for Syracuse. And there's Nick Faldo, major champion, right behind the Syracuse bench in a Syracuse orange t shirt. He has become friendly with Jim Beheim and his wife, Julie, who's on the left of your screen now. Matter of fact, they all went to dinner last night, and in the biggest upset of the week, Jim Beheim paid for the dinner. <laughs> Nick must have lost a bet with the T-shirt. Really plays golf with Beheim. We don't know if it's a birdie or a triple bogey. Beheim himself, a fine golfer. Joseph stripped by Coombs McDaniel, 21 to shoot for Syracuse. Interesting to hear Jim Calhoun talk about Coombs McDaniel. I mean, just the nitty-gritty kind of a kid. He likes that attitude. They lob it in and Oriaki fouled Jackson. First foul on Alex Oriaki. Jackson just wedged him right underneath the rim and held him off as they threw the ball up to him. Joseph, nice move to the bucket. Good read. That's his game. You got to play him for the drive and make him shoot a contested jump shot. It's obviously easier said than done. Jay, look at this back line. I mean, the wings come all the way up to the foul line if they have to. Great confidence in the back line coverage, the wingspan. I think they can throw it along C.J. Fair's side. He's just a freshman. He's keeping two guys behind the zone, but if Oriaki gets over there and Olander flashes in, they can get something on Fair's side. Walker's really been patient. They get an open look for Jeremy Lamb. Olander the offensive rebound deflected out of bounds by Joseph. And a timeout. With UConn leading Syracuse by two. Part of championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. UConn ball up by two, just about a full shot clock as they played it in. Yeah, they don't waste time. They don't want to get trapped in the corner. Get out and get set. Good flash. You 
guys talked last night about good coaching. In the case of Rick Pitino, is when you have a bench player, is ordinarily a role player and doesn't play much, but comes in and plays well, you leave him in. Oh, we he saw it with Van Trees last night and Mara. How about Olander tonight? Jim Calhoun's really riding the great effort of Olander. Understandably so. Booms McDaniel lost it. Look at this kid work here, right, Sean? Wide open, nice throw. Oh. What a great idea, though. Terms McDaniel was wide open under the bucket and they missed him. Nice slap, but just misdirected. Connecticut has played very well defensively in this game. Syracuse struggled to score in the regular season meeting against them. Scored just 66 points. Jackson inside to tie it up. How about that angle he gets? I mean, he's flat. It doesn't look like he can use the glass. Who's that left paw back? Little kids, but big fella. Well, he's always going to go to that left hand, no matter where he is. They can't just keep throwing it on the perimeter. They've got to get it into the middle. That's smart. Ooh, whoa, that was close. And the Walker using the old Andrew screen. Oh, Beautiful goodness. move. <laughs> Some lingerie on the deck. The little guy showing his game. Oh, what an up fake. Mm. 17 for Walker. He has scored at least 20 in each of the previous five games. Chris Joseph, a fake, then he shot it and missed it. And swept out of the air by Jamal Coombs McDaniel. Syracuse just has not taken good shots in this game. Holmes oh. McDaniel missed. Trish with Jardine, Joseph, Fair, and Jackson. Jackson is six points in the second half. Jardine fouled on a reach in by the freshman Jeremy Lamb. First foul on Lamb. Now this is as good as a fake by Sean McDonough when that bill comes to the table, huh? Get you up, get you get all excited. Step through. Is that pretty, Jake? I mean, it's not like he's going against some schlep from the playground. That's the defensive player of the year in the Big East. <laughs> he went around. That Did was you, big time. Were you referring to schlep to the player or to the player on our left? <laughs> <laughs> Deion Waiters in the game now with the ball. Baz Napier guarding him. He's just in for Jim Calhoun. The screen. Waiters dumps it underneath for Fair, and it's tied again. Curled that little screen that was the screener Fair, who set that screen with his backside. It was wide open. Good luck. That's Syracuse offense. Oh. Oriaki, wild shot, has it back. Fouled by Jackson. Are they going to count it? Yes. Says Michael Stevens, the outside official. Well, sometimes it's not the first effort, it's the second and the third effort. And Oriaki, who had 19 rebounds two games ago. Well, you forget he's just a sophomore. People want him to be consistently excellent all the time. Why can't you get 15 rebounds a game and do what Rick Jackson's been doing with his consistency? Well, because he's a sophomore. His great moments have been terrific. And he's responded well to Jimmy. You know, Jimmy's put him on the pines a little bit just to relax and learn. I just love his effort, this kid. Learning the game. And they're just trying to get more consistent production out of him night after night. Waiters strip. But you're right, Jay. He comes up big in big games. Oriaki running with Walker and now Napier for three. Jim Calhoun said, let's get some run outs. And when you run out, you get the slap back in the early three. Joseph missed, but fair in the right place. Ripped away by Walker. They run again. Foul. How about the confidence that Kemba Walker shows in his teammates? Gets into the lane where he could have easily taken that shot himself or sought out a body, tried to get fouled in transition. His little shake move, but this is the second one to get fouled. The prior move, picks the ball up. <laughs> he died on the floor, still can't get it. But he sees Napier stepping into his shot. That's, that's a, a guy who's confident in his teammates, willing to give the ball up. Great teammate. 
Perhaps you can refresh my memory. Which team is playing for the fourth game in as many nights? <laughs> I don't think it matters. You mentioned it earlier with this kid, particularly, and I think he wills the other guys to step their game up. Kemba's just a sensational leader. It's almost like they're shamed into it with how hard Kemba Walker works. Get the respirators ready if they win this one, huh? This is the largest lead for either team. Eight straight points for UConn to take an eight-point lead. Since the Big East tournament expanded to all 16 teams come to New York three years ago, UConn is the first team that had to start on the first night on Tuesday and has won three games in a row. Now they're trying to make it four straight wins and get to the championship game. Chris Joseph for three. Nice kick. And they're doing it against a very active UConn defense. This has not been an easy defense to go against. Napier used a no quandu screen. Now Donnell Beverly to Walker. Small lineup out there with Napier, Beverly, and Walker. Beverly got Joseph in the air and scored. Nice use of the offhand. How clever was that? Nice kick. How about Tyler Olander? Well, that, that, he showed poise in the middle of that zone. A little fake through the defense to him and then kicked it along the baseline. That was really well done by the freshman. And the first bucket of the night for Beverly. Joseph the answer. And again, you talk about coaches pushing the right buttons. Beverly didn't play at all yesterday. Did not get a single moment in the game against Pittsburgh. He does a nice job with the height. Look at this quick one. Napier, a deep three. Joseph up there. Now Waiters. Nearly midway through this second half. Jim Calhoun said, I'm a lot happier with my team than I was three days ago. Understandably so. Jackson again, powers inside. Syracuse back within three, and Calhoun calls a timeout. Not a bad idea to use the big guy down there. Get it to double zero. He'll give you a plus. Rick Jackson just bowling his way to the basket, setting that little ball screen, the throw back, and then the good pass in. He just went right into the chest of Charles Aquandu and knocked him back. Now you talked about guys learning the game earlier. Tyler Oler there, you mentioned patience. How about that? The lefty goes right, a little spooch in Manhattan. And wouldn't Bob Knight be proud? Two shot fakes in <laughs> one possession, they get a bucket. Oh, uh, he won't sleep tonight. Great atmosphere, as is always the case in the Garden, particularly when these two teams are going head to head. Offense is much better, largely because the shot selection is better on both sides. Jim Beheim and Jim Calhoun, a combined 1,702 wins. This game sets the record for most combined coaching victories. In an NCAA game, the old banquet joke: uh, the three of us have 1,800 wins. Unfortunately, they have 1,700 of them. Yes. But guys that are—I think they mellowed even with their teams too. Don't you think? You particularly did know Jim Bayham as a student. Walker, a deep three. Yeah. Ice water. He's got ice water in his veins. 22 points. So that's six straight games with 20 or more for Kemba. And Waiters nicely done, swooping to the bucket to get the Cuse back within four. We are midway through the second half. Another good one between these two great rivals. Flashing kick. Well, they made a nice adjustment. When the ball's going into the middle now, it's being kicked back out. Olander. Napier looked down, saw a shot of three, kept alive by Oriaki. Beverly attacks. Pretty good Rebound ball. Joseph. They have numbers on the break. Jardine all the way to the bucket, missed it. Tipped up and in by the hustling Jackson. How about the big guy getting the puppies down there? Didn't give up on the play at all. You love that in a kid. And Kemba Walker forcing the initial miss. Kids That's everywhere. one of the things Beheim says about Jackson. He know he's going to bring it every night. Oriaki. Hey Jay, you know what would be a bad adjustment? 
adjustment, put Walker in the corner, but Napier at the top. So when it goes to Olander, you kick and you got Kimba delivering that knockout. Well, Fab Mellon's got to get up a lot faster. I mean, you, you don't mind it going in there, but you don't want it going in there uncontested for a shot. Kicked out for a three from Waiters, the freshman rising to the occasion for Syracuse. It's a one point game with 8.45 to go. Waiters is going to score a lot of points for Syracuse before he's done. Walker for three. Long rebound. Waiters again. And now a chance for the lead for Syracuse. They were down by eight only a moment ago. Joseph for the lead. And he was fouled. The ability to run the floor prevails by Jackson. The kick out chain. The Big East tournament, it always delivers. <laughs> We're back at the garden. Here's a look at the American Eagle Outfitters stats update. Both teams shot 27% in the first half, but the offenses have really clicked into high gear here in the second half. Connecticut struggling from beyond the three-point line, but they have a 12-point edge at the free throw line to help make out make up for that. And the rebounding just about even. The Irish in the house, Ben Hands, bro Joey Brooks, signing some autographs. Notre Dame and Louisville. In the second semifinal, about 20 minutes after the conclusion of this one, and Ben Hansbro had just about a typical night for Ben Hansbro in their rout of the UC Bearcats last night. Look at the production of this kid 22 points, six rebounds, four assists. He's also got three steals. And he's had deflections, and he has been all over the floor. And what I've loved, Jay, too, even on other people driving, he's gone down and tried to help on a pinch. A consummate package. Joseph completes the four point play. He was fouled while shooting a made three right before the timeout. Syracuse by three. They've scored seven in a row. They were down by eight with 12 and a half minutes to go. Zone awfully big along the baseline. Walker off in a Quandu screen. Shut off by Waiters, who's been very good for Syracuse tonight. Dangerous pass. Oriaki to Walker. Whoa. That looked clean from here, and Jim Beheim and Dion Waiters thought so. Yeah, I thought he may have gotten some of the arms, just from my seat, anyhow. But he is tough getting between defenders. Wow. Yeah, yeah you don't think so? Look at that on the arm. The hand and the ball, are you going to give me that one? Yeah, no, he, he had a little arm. Yeah. And it's a shooting I, foul. I hate it when they take the ball away from a shooter. Does he say mentally he's ready? Yeah. And getting a two-shot foul. Interesting. I mean, it's a rhythm. You're right. Yeah, it's a, you know, the officials didn't administer the free. Not a big deal, but they didn't administer the free throw properly. One out of two. Two point lead for Syracuse. Eight minutes to go. The Orange won five Big East tournament titles and an offensive foul call. How smart is that kid? And that's utterly amazing. He. And it's on Jardine who was in possession of the ball. Apparently, he leaned into the defender, and it's the second foul on Scoop Jardine. Kemba tough. Look at him sell this. Sell it. Hi, Reese. Thank you. Another dandy. Syracuse, UConn, two point game. UConn with the ball down by two. A little bigger in the middle there with Mello. And they've got the wing guys with the great expanse. I like the screens out top for Walker. 
That brings the wing up and can create something along the baseline. Yeah, it gives you an overload, too. Ten to shoot. Dolander at the foul line. Trying to move in on Mello. Whoa, unlucky. All the way around the rim and out for Olander. Scored seven points in the first half. Matching a season high. He scored seven points in the game against Harvard back in December. Played with such confidence, though. Double stack low. Boy, the pass was behind Waiters. He had a, a step on Lamb. Now Joseph. Couple of moves. Leans into Coombs McDaniel. The tip by Mello. Jackson was fouled on the floor. Uh, Tyler getting the minutes tonight to make it the most of them. Play with great confidence to fill the look and that little drop step to the left. Doesn't get the break. Well, what you love about that was he caught, faced the defense, and made a play with poise. A little heartbreak on the roll. Foul on Oriaki was his second, fourth on Connecticut. Tough shot for Jardine. Mello tried to save it, did, but it went to Olander. Two on one. Walker plays it in. It looked like he got fouled. Yeah, yeah. he did. And Joseph good reached ball. in, didn't get whistled for it. Tie game, six and a half to go. And showed a great decision, not giving it up. He thought he had it, then did. Tough floater by Waiters. Mello underneath, fouled. Uh, he really can push it though, Jay. He gets out, spurts. Watch how he fakes toward his teammate running the lane. That little fake, just crossover. He did get fouled. But just to anticipate beautifully though. At the other end, the foul on Olander, sending Mello to the line. Planks off to the right. Mello, not a good free throw shooter. Now nine for 24 this season. What a performance yesterday. Big part of their six point win against St. John's. A little unlucky there as that popped out. Still tied at 55. Walker with Coombs, McDaniel, Lamb, Olander, and Oriaki for Jim Calhoun. Get some good movement from Lamb. Tough, tough. That's really pretty. How about it? We're talking about Hall of Fame coaches. Calhoun, little wrinkles here and there. Nice pop. Just getting into, into the middle has been really important for their offensive flow. Jim Calhoun said he didn't want to see windshield wipers. That's the ball going wing to top of the key to wing to top of the key and back. Jackson looked like he traveled. James Breeding played to his foot, saying so he kept his foot in place. And then a foul called on Oriaki. He's got to be careful. Well, that's what I don't understand about as we watch games all week long. You know, the inconsistency in what is demonstrative behavior and what is it. Well, they got the two hands. That's that rule, though. You know, I know he's upset. He's fortunate. Now, and we've like seen it. that. His reaction called a technical foul other times this year, including today, when yeah. I watched the Ohio State Northwestern game. Yep. You're right. And it really hurt them down the stretch. Nobody to play with the big fella. Third foul on Oriaki. Six team foul against UConn. Joseph. They've played a lot, a lot of this game now without Trish here in the second half, who's had a tough shooting night, but he's been arguably their best player lately. Jardine trying to stuff it inside, out of bounds. It'll be Syracuse ball with 19 to shoot. Well, that was a really nice move by Scoop Jardine. Tough closeout for Kemba Walker. This has been Joseph's best game in a while. Uh, and then he takes a hold. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a run out. Coombs McDaniel and fouled by Waiters. Uh, look at he's doing everything. He might as well help his teammate up, right? Kemba. Uh, Joseph has had such a good game. They're taking a couple poor shots, and this one perhaps the worst one of the night for him. And you, know, you take a bad shot, it's the first pass in your opponent's fast break. Good teams take advantage. They are as good now as I think they were early. They had a little rocky run in the middle of the year. 
You're talking about Connecticut? Connecticut, they found their stride. Don't you think they're better now than they were early? Yeah, because early it was all Kemba Walker. Now they're getting it from other players. I think they're better now. Well, I would agree, because I think Lamb's 100% better. Of course, all had their performance like tonight, Oriaki. Even a Kwandu's yeah. blocking shots, he's much more reliable than he was earlier in the year. Three fouls on Waiters. One out of two for Coombs McDaniel. Here's Niels Giffey, the freshman from Germany, in for the first time tonight with the magic touch Calhoun has had tonight with the bench players. You expect you him know. to do something special. Well, he can get a kick out three. Jay was working with his shooting, by the way, early in the year, and it helped him. Not that he gets that many opportunities. Well, I remember him when he was Niels Giffey. Yeah. Which he was back in Maui till he <laughs> told the sports information folks that's not the actual pronunciation of his name. Jardine for the tie. Popped off. They tapped it back out to Jardine. Don't need it. Oh, he got stuck in the air. Joseph rescued it. Jardine foul on a reach in by Giffey. The artist formerly known as Giffy. That was a terrific play by C.J. Fair. He kept that ball alive and kept Connecticut from coming away with it. Mm -hmm. They actually gave the foul to Okwandu. Looked from our vantage point like it was clearly Giffy, but tough break for Connecticut. It's Okwandu, and that's his third. Well, Okwandu got him with the body. There's no question about mm -hmm. that. But I, I, did you think that uh, Giffy, Giffy was reaching on the arm? Yeah. yeah. That may have happened first, but uh, Aquandu definitely hit him. So it's the limit and a one and one for Jardine. Jardine 66% from the line. Mellow on the bench. He could have changed his name in a few minutes he was in there. Could have been back to Giffy. <laughs> he wasn't in there for long. <laughs> one point game, 440 to go. So it's Walker, Coombs, McDaniel, Lamb, Olander, and Oriaki for Connecticut. Waiters, Jardine, Fair, Jackson, Joseph for Syracuse. And I like this lineup because of this. They got guys who can fill and dump down and score. Olander being the option as well as Lamb. Well, Lamb's the guy that they want in the middle, clearly. Yep. If they can get it. He goes down to the baseline, then comes back to the middle and out to the wing. So he stretches the D as well. Five to shoot. Walker in trouble. Step back. Oh. Good! What a shot. What strength that took. Incredible. Didn't have any legs. Just a whip. Well, you think he's boxed in. There's nowhere to go. Pivots, creates space without his dribble. Under four to go. Connecticut by three. Waiters got a bad pass back. Good effort by Waiters after he nearly turned it over. Shot clock at 13. Jardine a tough one. Good for three in the top. And good patience by Joseph. Didn't force it. Found his partner on the opposite side. Well, how about the second half by Syracuse without Brandon yeah. Trish at all? Right. Riding it with Jardine and Waiters at the top of this 2-3 zone. Lamb underneath. Oh, Lander. Oriaki the follow. What a great look. And then, of course, the conclusion. What a big fella. Lamb has been terrific in the middle of that zone. And Oriaki aboard away from another double-double. You mentioned it earlier. He's been big in their biggest games. He had 21 rebounds in their signature win at Texas. Well, when it's a man's game, he's played like a man. He's got to keep him going. This is oh, man against went. man there. Jackson and Oriaki. Jardine, the floater, popped off. Looked like it might have been touched on the rim. The Syracuse bench in an uproar. I yeah, thought it looked it, like the ball was still on the rim when it was deflected off by a Connecticut player. You may be right. I thought it was off, but I'm a little older than you. A little. <laughs> Huge possession. Everyone nice. big now. Lamb for three. Woo! Wow. And as the timeout was called, Jim Beheim right in the face of Jeff Clark pointing at the rim. It was. Yeah, you're right, Sean. It was over, over the cylinder. And how about the dagger? 
at the other end. And you are right, Mr. McDonough. I bow to your expertise and eyesight. As look at this, the pop by Olander to find just gorgeous nylon. Well, they wow. fo they followed a cutter to the middle with a second cutter. The first cutter was Lamb, then went out to the wing, then the second cutter Olander. That was great offense against the zone. Coverage of this Big East Championship also available on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. It probably is a side note that bears noting. We had the three officials step aside, all of them terrific officials, Tim Higgins, Jim Burr, and Earl Walton. It's possible that those guys might have been in this game tonight. Were they still here? Earl Walton's working, by the way, in the Big Ten tournament tonight. That was planned ahead of time. But it's possible some of these officials might not have been in this game. That having been said, before that call, there really hasn't been much to talk about relative to the officiating. They've done a great job. Jardine swatted by Oriaki. All kinds of numbers ahead for Connecticut, but time is valuable. And Walker, as is so often the case, does the right thing. He can keep it out top. And now they've got three extra handlers besides Walker to run that triangle to the lane. And Lamb in the middle. And Lamb's hit some big shots. None, no one's hit more than Walker. Wow, Kept safe. alive by Oriaki. Full shot clock. Now Jim Bay, I'm telling the defense to extend and come out. Waiters up on Coombs McDaniel. Jim Calhoun uncomfortable with that. Calls a timeout. Two timeouts left for each team. Let's look at how Kemba Walker is chasing the dream of a championship. Presented by the principal financial group. And he's almost single-handedly bringing these Huskies to the Big East championship game. Five-point lead. They're a minute 21 away if they can hold on. Hard scouting report's great. I mean, the scouting report is simple. Keep him out of transition. Don't let him catch it. Right. Make him take tough shots. How do you do it, though? <laughs> it is utterly amazing. And, and, and you had mentioned earlier, Jay, the beginning of the game, he let it come, let it flow. Didn't force shots, and all of a sudden got his team involved, and he stepped up. But you're right. You can scout this kid. You've got to play him to realize how tough he is to, tr uh, to stop and control. Well, you can measure what he's six feet tall. He weighs 100 and some pounds. You can't measure his heart. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he had one shot for the first 11 minutes of this ball game. One shot. A trap and again a timeout. Connecticut down to one as Walker was trapped in a tough spot near midcourt. If you're Jim Beheim, do you play this all the way down on the shot clock or do you think about starting to foul to I think at, the game? I think at this point I play this one you down. Play it. Yeah, Napier was a little upset. Nobody posted, so he had to give the ball into that trap situation. And they've already forced two timeouts. Both of these teams on the way to the NCAA tournament. Don't fill out your brackets until you spend Selection Sunday with us. Coverage starts Sunday at 3 Eastern with Bracketology. And then at 6, the Sports Center bringing you wall to wall coverage of the brackets once they're announced. And at 7 Eastern time, our experts will break it all down with two more hours of Bracketology presented by Staples. 23 on the shot clock. Both teams will be in the bonus. 1.15 left in regulation time. Napier with the ball. Cross court pass dangerous. Deflected out of bounds by Joseph. And then touched by Walker. So the trap works for Syracuse. Well, they want that ball on the foul line. They're not doing a good job executing. Well, that's why you play it out. Terrific play by Chris Joseph. And a good call it was. A tick off Joseph and then a tick off a Walker. Media timeout with 108 to go. Right now, Sean. All right, Reese and Connecticut's up five here with 108 to go. It'll be Syracuse ball. Brandon Trish has just now checked back into the game. 
You wonder why he's been on the bench so long. He left the game with 12.28 to go and is returning just now with 108 to go. He's been one of their best players all season long, particularly lately. I think they're probably thinking they may need some threes. One of the best. Well, he was struggling from the field, one of seven, but he had five assists. And now he's ice cold coming back into the game. He drives strong and scores. Tough kid, great shoulders as he faces up. Quick timeout. Didn't waste any time. Well, he's so strong. Mm. He catches the ball. He can get low and explode to the basket. Look, he keeps his shoulder low, or shoulders lower than the defender. And basketball is a shoulders game. The low man's going to win. He is built, too. I mean, he's a strong kid. Nice little play. Screen down, get him at the top. Good penetration. So each team with one timeout. UConn playing its fourth game in as many days. Back in the old days, before they expanded to all 16 teams, you're playing your fourth game. You were in the championship game. But now, you, if you start on Tuesday, you have to play five games to win the whole thing. Here's the history of teams to play four games in four days. Only two of them have won on the fourth day. Syracuse, when they won the championship against Pittsburgh in 2006 with the Jerry McNamara heroics, and then Pittsburgh, when they beat Georgetown to win it in 2008. Ken Kemba get them their fourth straight win and a chance to win a historic fifth tomorrow night against Notre Dame or Louisville. They extend the floor, they trapped half court. Pretty good job, denial here. And uh, a turnover. Whoa. And it may be a home pull down. Nobody touched nope. it. It's Nobody has a signal. Now they are signaling Syracuse ball. It's out of bounds under because nobody touched it. How about that? Great job guarding. And right there, that's the little bit of a takedown as well. Yeah, had an yeah, arm. yeah, I saw that. Maybe he did get a little piece of it, but yeah, I didn't Joseph think anybody touched it. Wrapped around, was not called. Beverly's pass, Aaron. Now a three ball would tie it, but with this much time, they'd take a two. Jardine, there he is. Walker in the air. Trish just back in the game. Missed. Walker the rebound. And a foul. Boy, that was some effort rebound. Good, clean look. Trish drove earlier. Sometimes when you have been in the game, you don't have a good feel for the shot, but loose enough with that drive. You didn't need a three there, and Beverly put good late pressure on it. Just look at this effort. I mean, what more do you want from this kid? I mean, that's up for grabs. Heck of a rebound. They're five a game. Magnificent. Big rebound against St. John's with a follow and a foul. Goodness. This is a one and one. He's seven out of eight tonight. 80% for the year. Two possession game. And you still don't need a three. Two, you're right. If you can get to the rim and then kick it out for somebody stepping into an open three, that's one thing. Syracuse won the six overtime epic two years ago, largely at the free throw line. Connecticut turning the tables in the rematch tonight. Jardine into traffic. Kicks it out for Waiters for three. Long rebound to Jardine. Hooked away by Walker. And a foul as it wound up in the hands of Oriaki. But it was Kemba Walker who made another play. Unbelievable contributions. Totally immersed in the flow of the game. And there's that smile, effervescent. Welcome home, huh? Kid from the Bronx, downtown. I don't think Charlie Sheen has co-opted the term, but Kemba Walker's just a winner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flat out winner. <laughs> just exudes. Does so he have tiger passion. blood in Adonis DNA? <laughs> <laughs> Oriaki one and one. And again tonight in a big one. Oriaki has performed at a high level. His 10th double double of the season, second in this Big East championship. He had 13 and 19 against DePaul. Down by six. Now you probably do need yep. a three. And Jardine Jack's a big one. Oh, banked it in. Wow. Syracuse still alive with some luck, and they used their last time out. How about that confidence, huh? A little smooch late. You don't want to foul, so you're a little lazy with the challenge. 
Well, now getting the ball inbounds of utmost importance. Jardine off the window. Well, that's one of the few mistakes you've seen Walker make. No hand up, huh? Get him out of there. Yeah, he's <laughs> killing you, Jimmy. <laughs> Boy, it's his night, Jay. He's been magnificent. Start to finish. And first 11 minutes of the game only had one shot. And since then, he has been assertive. He has gotten the ball to his teammates when they are open. He's rebounded. Loose balls, you name it, he has done everything. Yeah, big thing now for the Qs is big on the ball, face guard, try and get that lob pass over the top with their foot speed and length, come up with it. He'd love it in his hands because of the ability to make free throws. Maybe the most important man on the floor right now is the person inbounding the ball for UConn. You have to make a good decision. And we've seen if you don't step and cut to the ball, it's a problem as well. That's right. the second guy. And passing angles. Uh, when Beverly threw that last ball away on the inbounds, just didn't have a good passing angle. You can run the baseline. Tough. But Kemba might be able to inbound it and catch it himself. <laughs> if it were legal. 29 points for Walker, nine rebounds, five assists. And a lot of plays that, as they say, don't show up on the stat sheet, like that deflection a moment ago to get possession for Connecticut. It'll be Lamb to throw it in with Beverly, Napier, Walker, and Oriaki. Joseph will defend on the ball. Lamb struggling to get it in. Finds Beverly ahead to Napier. 17 seconds to go. Syracuse letting him dribble. Finally, Trish fouls. Napier with 15 seconds to go. Napier, very good free throw shooter, 76 and a half percent for the season, and has not gone to the line yet tonight. That's still a one and one. It's the ninth team foul, so this front end is crucial. Freshman in the big spot. Rebounded by Jackson. Out of bounds to Syracuse. Well, he's taking Chancy. a chance there. Yeah, well, he I was. Thought, I thought he got it. Relied on the whistle. You've got to go get that ball when it's available to get. Leave it in the hands of the officials. Now will Calhoun foul as the clock ticks down? I certainly would. Jackson trying to screen. Jardine, an open look at a three! Unbelievable! They did not foul. But you just can't give those clean looks, and that's why guys have confidence. You're not playing real well. You go back to your leader, scoop. Not necessarily to the hoop, but nylon from deep. Right now, if you're Syracuse, I don't guard the ball out of bounds. I put two guys on Kemba Walker. Because I he double can get up there, you're right? darn right. I don't put anybody on the ball, and I put two guys on Kemba Walker. You know, the ball's going to Walker. And you got to keep it away from him. Put one guy in front, one guy behind. The, the one thing though is Napier is very quick. He can do the same thing, but I would, I would, I would obviously, but I, I do think if he can get it up the floor, sometimes it loosens up the two guys that might be playing Walker. He might be able to get him plenty of time. I would rather have somebody else with the ball than Kemba Walker. Walker's had game-winning shots in the final seconds against Texas, against Villanova, and against Pittsburgh yesterday. When the game was tied with less than five seconds to go, the great move to shed the great defender Gary McGee, who got stuck on Walker on the switch. The step back won it for Connecticut. He's also hit go-ahead shots in the last possession against Wichita State and Michigan State. He's done it all season long. Does he have one more in him? Will he have the chance? Beverly throws it in. Oriaki back to Beverly. Final seconds. Off oh. for Walker. They throw it away with .6 to go. Pretty well designed play, though, other than the execution. Neither team a timeout, so Bayheim can't drop anything here. And do we have 
the prospect two years later of more overtime sessions between Connecticut and Syracuse. Somehow that would seem very fitting. If we do, I need to run to the restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, we look like a Flomax commercial at the end of that <laughs> six overtime game. In the Jardine. Wow, he was very nearly fouled by Kemba Walker. Jardine got hurt too, back in the table. Boy, how big is that lucky bank three look now? At the time, it looked like a shot that might just cosmetically change the final score a little bit, but it set up this one that did not require any luck. On to overtime again for the Huskies in Orange. Back at Madison Square Garden in the world's most famous arena. Scene of so many memorable games and events throughout its history. One of the most memorable, the six overtime game two years ago in the Big East quarterfinals between these two teams, won by Syracuse. Tonight in the Big East semifinals, they go to overtime again, tied at 68. Jackson and Oriaki on the tip, and it wound up with Beverly. It looked like Jackson actually tipped it, but to Beverly it went. Beverly Walker, Lamb, Oriaki, and Olander for Connecticut. Lamb's, Lamb's done a lot of good work in the middle of the zone and popping out to the wing. Walker open from the elbow, short, got his own rebound and got fouled. Kid's amazing, utterly amazing. Of course, you know when you miss or pull the string where the ball's going, but a nice screen. You can't give this guy this many looks. He's got stamina, grace, and a sense of the urgent. So that ball screen against the zone has been effective, and they can keep going at it. Tenth team foul, so it's two shots the rest of the way for Connecticut. Connecticut's committed only seven, so there could be a couple of one and ones. Mm. He's even hit the net or the uh, rim. Let's see. Yeah, no fatigue in those free throws. 11 out of 12 from the line. 31 points for Kemba Walker. Not bad going in here, I think. A little pressure on him. Uh, a little nickel dimer. Oriaki called for some contact in the low block. His fourth foul. They don't want to lose him. He's been a force inside tonight with a double double. He's been frustrated a little bit on some of the calls in there. They're going to bring Oquandu as three fouls back in. Yo yo to Biggs, not a bad idea. Well, sometimes as an offensive player, when that foul's called, you're a little disappointed because then you have to go to the line when you felt like you had an angle and could have scored. Uh, good point. And, and this particular individual struggles from the free throw line. Fifty-one percent for the season, fifty percent for his career, but he has made some big free throws down the stretch. Against Rutgers and Villanova when they really needed them, didn't make the front end there. UConn ball. And Jackson never comes out of the ball game. And he averages about 37 minutes a game. Not many big guys do that. Amazing. And I think the highest praise was Jim Calhoun's analysis of him. They called him the Rock yeah. of the Big East, right? Yep. Yeah. Walker ball slipped out of his hand. Jardine has Trish alongside, might have traveled and laid it in. Nice play by Walker, not fouling it. Even better with the hold off. Looks like Scoop got a little piece of that when Walker went up. Mm -hmm. Look how wide they have to come up on this wing. Well, they're moving the ball and they're, they're getting good player movement. They're not just standing around. So there's a lot to process for this zone. You're looking behind you. Got to get a flash guy. Walker shut off by Jardine, seven to shoot. Aquandu sets a screen. Walker a deep three. Rebound Joseph. Ripped it away from Olander. Four on three break for Syracuse. Jardine off to CJ Fair. Lost it on the ground. Beverly dives on the floor. Well, he had Trish on the wing, getting the puppy set. Bad read. Walker catching his breath. Fourth game in as many days for Connecticut. Just the second in as many nights for Syracuse. Great trap situation. Looked diagonally. Got him. Good try. Beverly, then the bad pass. Joseph ahead to Jardine. Two on two with Trish. Jardine, wild shot. Jackson missed the flush. Joseph open for three. Lamb flying through the air for the rebound. 
What an effort. Are these guys competing or what? Walker has to be pooped. Lamb a floater in and out. Batted around. Beverly in the traffic. Oquandu's over the back for his fourth foul. Mm. And the ninth team foul, so it'll be the last one and one. Well, you said they're going after one another. They just had a good selection here. I just make that, right, Jay? Like, you don't have to jam it. Yeah, you're right. Just did get a hand on that on the way up. I love the ability to ward off on this end, to Just keep the guy on you, keep the ball left, and you may have been right. A little pitter patter at the end. So, CJ Fair with the big front end of a one and one. Syracuse has been the worst free throw shooting team in the league, but Jim Beheim likes to say we make most of them when we need them. Fair's just 60.4% for the year. One out of two tonight. Looks like some of the players didn't realize it was a one and one. 16 point edge from the free throw line for Connecticut. Coombs, McDaniel, DeLam, and now Walkers with a Kwandu and Oriakis back in the game. Both big men with four fouls for UConn. Not sure you want to go into the middle with those bigs. If they can get it to Coombs, McDaniel, or Lamb in the middle. Boy, Jardine deflected that pass. Lamb, a one handed floater. And what a smart play. If he went any further, he may have charged. And it was a great job to come to that ball after it was deflected to get it. He didn't right. wait for it to come to him. That was a big time play by Jeremy Lamb. They run Trish around some screens. He should be fresh with all the time on the bench. Walker stripped it. Bayheim Irene thought there was a foul. Actually, he got bumped before the slap away. Walker got hit in the face. And James Breeding stops the game. Jim Calhoun and Breeding having a conversation now. He wants to make sure he's okay. Uh, he wants to play. And there's the bump, I thought. Maybe eventually, I thought the hands were quick and in good position, but Lamb throws him off a little. Nice slice. All right, 25 on the shot clock. Minute 25 in the first overtime. Syracuse didn't lead in the first five overtimes two years ago, and they haven't led in this overtime. They've been outscored four to two. Land. He's had a huge Big East tournament. Great move again, and pinned by Fair on the way up. What a block by C.J. Fair. One minute to go in overtime. When you stop. Many of the fans on their feet. Pulsating action. Joseph a miss. And a foul call. It's on Oriaki who's fouled out. What a great reaction, huh? More than a fair play. And then the ability to go to the other end. That's a shame. I think they felt like the Connecticut bench felt like that ball had hit the backboard when it was touched. Oriaki fouls out with 15 points and 11 rebounds, 10th double double of the season. So Olander's in with the Kwandu, Coombs, McDaniel, Lamb, and Walker. And Chris Joseph will be the free throw shooter. Free throw line letting Syracuse down tonight. He's 70.4% for the season. One for one from the line tonight. This is a two shot opportunity. Syracuse is 0 for 3 from the line in overtime. Napier will return with 51 seconds to go in the extra session, and Jim Beheim's going to send Mello in for fair for a little more size in the middle of that zone defense. And you know, Sean and Jay, this is a, a very good for you kind of sense the smaller lineup. They got more flexibility, popping, making decisions, using the bounce, passing ability. Jim Calhoun hollering instructions to Kemba Walker. They're going to let it run down. 20 on the shot clock, 35 in the first overtime. A one point lead for Connecticut. Run out. 
Gonna bring a ball screen to him. Oh, Lander. Now Land. Nice move to get free. Carter Gunn. Jeremy Land. 25 seconds to go. Joseph to Trish. Jardine used the Jackson screen. Oh, a deep three. Off the mark. They didn't need that with that much time left. Walker has it and he's fouled. Go to the rim. Don't settle. Well, how about Jeremy Lamb? That kid's a freshman. A rising frost with his ability. A little fake to his left and goes to his right on the catch against the closeout. Splits. And how about the runner? Oh, Isn't that amazing? Time. That is big time. That is tough to convert as well. Twice. Bringing that bell big time for the Huskies. You might say March has come in like a lamb for the Yukon Huskies. He's been tremendous in all four games. 19 against the Paul, 11 against Georgetown, 17 yesterday. And now 11 tonight. Here's Walker at the line. Two possession game with 13.2 to go. He's 12 out of 13 from the free throw line. 32 points, 12 rebounds for Kemba Walker. Tireless. Five point game. Jardine, another deep three, pops off. Trish had his hands on it, out of bounds to Connecticut. And they're celebrating in the Husky Blue now. Five seconds away from their fourth win in as many nights. And it took overtime to do it. Into a Kwandu. Connecticut will play for the championship. That kid is incredible. Syracuse's six-game winning streak is over. And two years later, two years after that epic six-overtime game, another terrific ball game between these two great rivals. Won in overtime by Connecticut, 76 to 71. So the Huskies will try to win their seventh Big East Tournament Championship tomorrow night. When they talk, take on the winner of the game coming up next between Notre Dame and Louisville. And the Irish and Cardinals are in the tough act to follow department tonight. Syracuse will head to the NCAA tournament at 26 and 7. They were led by 20 points by Jardine and 20 by Joseph. And here's Doris Burke. Coach Calhoun, other than extraordinary basketball skill, what is inside that six foot frame to my left, Kemba Walker? Well, probably the biggest hot in America. I feel he's the best player, as I continue to say, and no one does more. And he made Tyler into a better player tonight, come off the bench, and he did so many things for us. And he's become my mouthpiece on the bench, too. And he's just a wonderful player. And you know what? This is a great, the fourth day, these kids have turned it up and led by, as I said, the best player in America. Even with Kemba Walker, coach, the expectation was not that this young team would play for a championship in Madison. Square Garden on Saturday night. You had a rough stretch in the middle of the season. What allowed this team to find its stride in such a tough conference so late? Well, we always believed in each other. Any team, we said from Maui to Manhattan, and uh, we were great early. We were great when we won six straight and beat some very good teams, Texas, Tennessee, etc. cetera. We, we hit a, a, a slump like some teams do, and the best thing we responded back with four straight wins, and nobody could be happier than us. Coach, congratulations. Thank you, guys. Kemba Walker. Up until this point in your career, Madison Square Garden had not been friendly to your personal game. What has driven you over these four days? Well, you know, I just want to win. Me and my teammates, you know, we have the will to win. You know, we, people always know, seem to talk about that we're, that we're the underdogs, but, you know, we don't think so. You know, we think we're really good, and, you know, we're just showing the world. Jay and Bill talked all night long about your willingness to trust your teammates. What gave you faith that these guys would respond? 
you know, these, those last three games, my teammates helped me a lot. You know, they stepped up big time, and, you know, I don't want to quit on them. You know, I, I believe in those guys. You know, I believe in them this whole season. You know, we, we got fought with each other, and, you know, we just, I'm going to just stick with those guys. The obvious question is you will now have to try to win a championship with five games in five days. How do you guys find the will and the skill and the legs? The same thing we did today. You know, just stay mentally tough, stay together, and, you know, I think God has some plan for us. Kemba, congratulations. Thank you. Sean. All right, Doris, <laughs> he continues to amaze. 33 tonight, he's now averaged 28 points in the four Husky wins here. It's his third double-double of the season. One of them was a triple-double. College basketball scoreboard coming up next, followed by Louisville and Notre Dame for the right to play Connecticut in the final tomorrow night. For Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, and Doris Burke, Sean McDonough saying so long for just a few moments from Madison Square Garden. Let's send you back to the studio. Thank <laughs> you.